So next up in our pedal board building series is power. How should we go about powering our pedals? What is, well, the best way? We'll find out in this episode. My name is Will, this is A Rocket Complex. If you didn't know, A Rocket Complex is a band and we have a brand new single out, it's called Freshen Up. You can check it out in the link in the iCard up there or the first link in the description. In fact, all the music you're gonna hear in this episode is all from A Rocket Complex. A big thanks to Schmidt Array for helping us out with this series. You can check out their pedal boards, linked in the description. So I think the view count on this episode out of the series is going to be the one with the lowest because I know power is boring, but it is so important for your pedals to sound their best. Why are you going to go through all of this effort to build a board just so that you have buzzing and horrible sound? Like, why would you do that to yourself? That just seems silly. So to start with, most pedals use these 2.1 millimeter barrel connections. One of the most common ways that you see people powering their pedals is with these daisy chains and a wall ward, but I cannot recommend them for a few reasons. You know, like Christmas lights, how one LED is connected to the next one and connected to the next one. All it takes is one broken wire in that chain and the whole thing doesn't work. Not only is that a really bad idea from, you know, having something go wrong, but they also share ground across all of those connections. This can cause a whole load of issues between analog, digital pedals, between drive pedals, some with charge pumps, some without. It's just not worth your time, so we have to look elsewhere. I'd say most of the time you can ignore using batteries, but there are some good cases for them. There are some classic fuzzes and range masters that just sound better on a battery, they just do. Also, if you're considering having a wah off of your pedal board like I am, it's much easier to just leave one in there, but because I low current draw a pedal like a fuzz or a wah, it's going to take forever to eat through that battery. So if you are gonna use a battery, I would highly recommend buying a nine volt rechargeable one. There's tons that you can get on Amazon. You can even get ones where you can plug a USB into them to recharge them from the mains. But try not to use batteries for everything. And still, they are really inconvenient to change out. And let's not even get started on how much they pollute the planet. Says the guy who drives around in his car which has a giant battery in it. I know. Hypocrite, right? For me, a dedicated pedal board power supply is the only way to go. So which power supply is right for you? Well, as a first primer, there is a fantastic episode from That Pedal Show, linked in the description, that you can watch all about the different things to consider when buying a power supply. One of the things that they go over in That, 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 hang on, That, That Pedal Show, Show, <laughs> they talk about how you should add up all of the current draw of your pedals, take that, and that's how much power you're going to need. So that's exactly what I've done with my board here. We've added up all of the current that we're gonna need and then doubled it. And then we can plug in numbers for all the different power supplies that we want. Say one has 3000 milliamps or one has 5000 milliamps. We can see how much we need versus the headroom that's left in the power supply. We're also going to need to consider what polarity our pedals are. Most pedals nowadays have a center negative connection, but you're going to need to check with each one of your pedals. If you have a center positive connection, you're gonna need some kind of adapter or converter to use it with your power supply. Not only that, if you're using, well, let's say a Whammy 4 still for some reason, you may need to look at using AC. Some pedals still take AC. Even some preamps with tubes in them will have AC power connecting them. Tubes, tubes? God, this is the thing about being transatlantic. I can never remember how to say that word. Hang on, let me, let me ask. How do you say the thing that where the trains go underground in London? How do you say that? Tube. Tube. C-H. No, tube. It's... Tube is the British one, yeah? It's spelled T-U-B. -E. Yeah, yeah, but in your accent, you pronounce it as C-H-U-B-E. Okay. Instead of tube with like a T-O. Tube. Okay. YouTube. YouTube. Do you say YouTube? You do? That's interesting. You may also need to consider how you're going to attach this power supply to your board. Some may fit on the top of the pedal board, but you may be able to fit them underneath as well. And I would highly recommend having custom lengths of power cables as well. You can make them yourself. You can get solderless ones. We've been over this. <laughs> So what power supply did I pick for my board? Well, if you know me, I'm a fan of that pedal show as I called out before. So it's obvious that I picked the gig rig generator. There are several advantages to the gig rig power supply that really uh, enticed me, such as the solderless connections, as well as the modular nature of the power supply. So with the modular nature of the power supply, I can build up the power supply to as big or as small as I need for each build. 
and because they're each individual modules, I can hide them all throughout the build instead of one big giant brick in the middle of it. Also, they're pretty lightweight versus other power supplies as well, weighing as much as a brick as well. But hey, they are quite expensive, so that might be something to factor in for you. If you want to look at some other modular power supplies, Strymon have a great one too. On my pedal train build that you've seen a couple shots of featured in this series, I actually used a uh, True Tone CS12 and that worked great for me as well. So, what power do you use on your board? Let me know in the comments. If you want a deeper dive on this subject, there are some great videos linked in the description. Now we sorted out the cables and the power, what sort of extras do we need for this build? We'll find out next time. So hey, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked the video, a positive rating would be appreciated. You have no idea how much that helps out the channel. If you'd like to leave a comment and don't know what to say, why not leave the comment, Daisy Chains suck? Because they do, I hate them. If you're watching this video day and date of release, why not check out the rest of the videos in the playlist up here? As well, why not subscribe to see when the next episode comes out? You can hit the bell icon to also get email notifications when it goes live. You can check out A Rocket Complex's music on Spotify. It's the first link in the description. Thanks again to Smitteray for helping us out with this series. All right, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.